All right, well, hello and welcome to this blend of Pilates and yoga. Uh, think more yoga conditioning, but on the softer side of things. So we're going to be focusing mostly on bringing the core back online or firing it up, which is really helpful for all things day to day, but also just building strength and resilience in the core. Although this class is great for everybody, it's specifically great for women who've had children or who are peri or already menopausal because it just helps bring the core and the pelvic floor back online, which is really helpful. So a couple props, only thing you're going to need today is a set of yoga blocks and a blanket or like a really large bath towel if you don't have a blanket handy. We're going to start our practice with a little bit of myofascial release for the abdomen just to start, to start some neurological um, sparking to bring that back online and then we'll get into the work. So to begin, we're going to actually create kind of like a horseshoe shape with our blanket. So go ahead and unfold the blanket so we can hold it in a rectangle shape where you have maybe like two feet by three feet of fabric, a pretty decent amount of fabric. And then placing that on the floor, you're going to tightly roll that up. So as tightly like a burrito without losing any of the good stuff <laughs> that you can. Once you have it in that really tight rolled up position, we're just going to turn the two edges downward and you might have to tuck some loose edges underneath of itself. So you're literally creating like the shape of a horseshoe with your blanket. And if you lose that, just feel free, unravel, re-roll, and then set it right in the middle. So we're gonna find two places. We'll have to flip it when we get to the second place. But when you have this horseshoe, have the ends, the open ends towards your body and the round shape towards where you're gonna be laying down. And when we come to lay down, you want this first little kind of rounded hunch to be right underneath the rib. So if you kind of, before we come down, if you palpate and you find your bottom rib cage, right in this soft tissue of the abdomen is where we're gonna to wanna to place that. And then kind of the legs of the horseshoe are gonna be there to support through the hips. So <laughs> hopefully that makes sense. When you're ready, just go ahead and come on down. Again, making sure that top part is right there in the soft tissue of the abdomen and kind of settle in. So the purpose here is to just start with some diaphragmatic breathing with that fold there to give us that neurological feedback to bring this whole system back online if it's gotten a little quiet. <laughs> so you can stay up on the forearms if that's comfortable. Um, I'm gonna stay on the forearms just for the sake of my microphone, but you can also stack hands and lay all the way down. You can cactus shape the arms and lay on one side of your face. Whatever feels the most comfortable and inviting for you. But again, we've got that bundle of blanket right there in that soft tissue of the belly, and then just take a couple of deep breaths. Not trying to push or restrict or anything like that, but just simply feel that feedback, that tactile connection there with the breath and the blanket. As you inhale, you'll probably feel a gentle pushing away of the blanket, and as you exhale, kind of that softening or melting into it. I also really like this because it gives that nice little connection through the fronts of the hips too, which can be really nice. Just fall into that breath. Try to soften through the rest of the body. So notice if there's any tension through the hips, through the pelvis. Even through the jaw, we don't want to bring in tension when we're literally trying to let the tension go. One of the problems with the pelvic floor is so much tension. So if you ever battle with leakage or anything like that, trying to just get these muscles to turn on without extra tension can be a really powerful antidote to that. And take two more deep breaths here just like that. And then however you like, go ahead and kind of creepy crawl your way off of that. And we're just going to flip this horseshoe shape. So take your blanket and flip it. So now you have the loose ends towards the top of your mat and you've got that rounded horseshoe part towards your knees. And this time we're going to place the edgy part of the horseshoe right underneath or right next to the pubic bone. So as you come to lay down, you want to be kind of right in line with your frontal hip bones and the soft tissue of the abdomen will now just be laying free in the soft space created. So again, you might have to kind of wiggle your way into it, but you just want that right there on the pubic bone. And then I like to kind of just 
bring the free edges in closer. So now you're closing off the horseshoe and making more of a circle, just so it kind of holds the structure together. So these points we're breathing into. Once you land, go ahead and come right back into your breath. I just want to kind of navigate you so you know where we're going. We're really focusing today on bringing the entire core online. A lot of the times we do core exercises and it consists of that rectus abdominis layer, that layer that gets really tired, that burning sensation, think like crunches and sit-ups, things of that sort. But our purpose today is to bring everything online, the less noticeable muscles, so quadratus lumborum, the QL, the obliques, even through the hips, the iliacus, the iliopsoas, all of these regions. So where you notice the connection of the blanket, not right now down there at the pubic area, we'll bring that aligned to the pelvic floor, and then the area we had on the flip side with the horseshoe, that whole entire diaphragmatic way. So hopefully we're noticing this as we're literally having that tactile connection, so as we get into our practice, we can really focus on these areas. Let's take three more breaths here. And try to soften and melt in as much as you can. And one more deep breath here. And then slowly release, press yourself off. And we're going to go ahead and set up our blanket for something we'll need a little later. So go ahead and undo the roll that you created. And again, coming back to this rectangle amount of, of fabric, but grab the short ends of it. And we'll just kind of create an accordion. So fold that in half. So now you just have half the length of what you had, but you still have the same width. And then fold that in third. So I'll lay mine down and then just in third. So you have a very small piece of fabric, but it's about two or three inches thick. And if that doesn't make any sense to you, just fold it where you have just about this amount of fabric and two or three inches. And then just set that off to the side. We're going to come back to that, but that way it's ready when we need it and we don't have to come back up to fold it. You're going to need your blocks too, so go ahead and bring your blocks with you and we're going to flip it over and come supine or laying on the back. So for now, you're just going to need one block, but go ahead and set your blanket and your other block within arm's reach because we're going to need them while we're on our backs. And we're going to take the block under its lowest setting and place it right underneath the hip region. So as you come onto your back, have your knees bent and then press through the feet to lift the hips. Slide the block underneath your tailbone and hips. Just make sure none of the low back is on the block. We want to make sure the low back is really free. And before you bring your knees into your chest, place your hands on the lower part of the belly, right above the pubic bone, kind of where the blanket just was when we were on our belly a moment ago and just mimic like a cough <laughs> and notice the tissue there that pushes into your hands when you do that. So go ahead and mimic a cough again with the hands there so you can really feel where we're gonna be focusing. So the area of the belly that pushed into your hands, that's what we wanna focus on. So keep your hands there on the lower abdomen and bring your knees into your chest one at a time. So here you might need to adjust the block a little bit if it was a little too low or too high. And again, do that coughing. <clears throat> and that area that pushed into the hands, you stay where you are. Just take a look at your camera. I want to show you where we're going. So you have that area here. Imagine like you're trying to bring your frontal hip bones together. So you're cinching in and then drawing up towards the belly button. So that moment of the cough where it was engaged, we're going to try to hold on to that sensation as we start to move everything around. So I'll get back and join you. So knees are into the chest. So let your low back really cascade towards the floor. Bring your knees into your chest. Have that sense of cinching in and drawing up. And then we're slowly just going to take one foot at a time towards the floor. Now, the moment you notice your pelvis tilting and the low back lifting, that's your end range. So your foot doesn't have to touch the floor. It may be nowhere near the floor. <laughs> but keeping the knees bent, we'll just alternate slowly tapping and extending one leg towards the floor while keeping that engagement, that cough-like engagement, the entire time. So really bringing this transverse abdominus, this corset-like muscle online. So that's that sense of cinching in, bringing that TVA back online, bringing some awareness to it. 
Now, if it helps, I think it's really helpful to keep the hands on the pelvis so you'll notice if the pelvis is pushing into the hands. You might be using a little bit more low back or pelvis to find this leg extension, but we really want to find that in the core. So really keep your pelvis centered. Don't let it tilt up. Keep that low back cascading down towards the floor. And just take a couple more rounds here. And this one's really helpful if we move really slowly because sometimes if we move really quick, the pelvis might be tilting without us even noticing. And take one more on the left. and then come back into center. So keeping the hips on the pelvis, take your hands away from the hips, place your hands on your thighs, and we're gonna push hands into knees, knees into hands. So you've got resistance on both ends. Now keep the resistance, but let the arms win. So you're pushing the knees away, but the knees are still pushing into the hands. So there's constant resistance. And then push the knees into the hands, but this time let the knees win. So keep pushing through the hands, but the knees are just a little bit stronger. And again, as you keep moving here, letting the legs win, then letting the arms win, this kind of resistance push battle, really try to keep your low back falling towards the floor and that pelvis nice and neutral. And notice how that starts to spark a lot of awareness through the entire core, especially if you're really, really <laughs> pushing through the hands and the legs. And let's just do two more. Let the legs win, go as far as you can until you feel that pelvis move, and then let the arms, or let the legs win. Let's do one more round, really noticing the pelvis not moving, but just keeping this in the core. All right, now hold it on the left. Keep the resistance, so keep pushing your right, your, sorry, your left knee into your left hand, left hand into left knee, but then reach your right arm and your right leg over your hips. Now keep that left side resistance, but slowly lower your right leg towards the floor and your right arm towards the floor. But again, really noticing that the pelvis is not moving and the low back is still dropping towards the floor. So basically just like a single side jackknife with resistance on that left side. So keep pushing through the left. We don't wanna lose that resistance. Nice and slow here on the right side. And find whatever breath works for you. I personally like to inhale as I open the arms and exhale as I close, but the flip-flop breath might work better for you. So just find what works for you in your practice. So these first couple exercises are really meant to bring everything online and spark that awareness. And then we're gonna keep progressively getting more and more into the deeper core. So again, just make sure you're not holding your breath. Find a breath that supports you. And on the next one, bring, bend the right knee, bring the right hand to the right leg, push that resistance, reach left arm and leg long, and then open and close the left side while simultaneously pushing right hand and right knee in towards one another. So bringing all of that online, firing up this nervous system feedback. And really notice here, especially on the left, we don't want the ribs popping open. We don't want the low back starting to lift or the pelvis moving. We're keeping this just in the core. So it's kind of like the rest of the body is concrete. <laughs> Nothing can move except the arm and the leg. So not even the hip. Which if we really focus on that engagement, will make this a lot harder than if the rest of the body is trying to move and support. And slowly release, bring both knees in. Now we're gonna take the arms overhead. Before we do anything with the legs, bring the knees in a little closer to the chest so you feel your low back melting more towards the floor. And then slowly we're gonna start to bring both feet at the same time towards the floor. So arms are overhead, make sure the ribs aren't popping. So imagine you're trying to pull your ribs down towards your hips and your feet might not touch the floor. They might not even be anywhere near the floor and <laughs> that's okay. Just really focus on the low back, the pelvis, and the ribs not moving, and lower your legs as much as you can. And that's gonna be your end range and help your core come back online in a way that's helpful for your body, which is gonna be different for all of us. Make sure you're breathing. I find it really helpful to breathe on one, like exhale as you bring the knees into the chest, inhale as you take them away. But find a breath that really helps you. 
especially as the feet lower towards the floor, imagine pulling the ribs down and that cinching in we practice with the cough. Keeping all of that really engaged. And then slowly bring the knees in, release one leg at a time, and then lift the hips enough to slide the block out. And now here's where you're going to need both blocks. So we're going to start on the left side. So take one of your blocks on its highest setting, and you're going to place it between the left hamstring and the left arch or left um, Achilles area, that hollow part of the ankle. The other block on its highest setting is going to go between the left elbow and the left thigh. So the left side is going to, again, just be like kind of concrete. Imagine you're not moving anything on the left. Reach your right arm and leg up over the hips. Keep pushing the left elbow and knee together. Keep squeezing through that left side. Slowly lower right arm and right leg towards the floor. Again, without lifting through the ribs and arching through the low back. So find your personal end range. And really start to bring that core online. Again, find a breath to support you. If you like, you can start to lift the head and shoulders. That might amplify things a little bit. And if that took it up too much, bring the head back down. But I find that can be a little bit more helpful, especially to keep the low back down. And let's go one more here, and then we're just going to switch sides. So after that next one, just exact same thing on the other side. So set yourself up, block between hamstring and foot, and then block between thigh and elbow on the right. Feel free to leave the head down, or you can lift it up. Left side, hand and leg, and then slowly open like you're opening a book. Keep that low back nice and grounded. That sense of cinching in and up, that end of the cough engagement. Just make sure you're not holding your breath to achieve that. <laughs> we don't want to invite in strain and tension. We just really want to make sure everything is awakening and firing the way it should. All right, let's go two more here. And then release. Hopefully now starting to feel the core a little bit more. Take one block away. You'll need your other block. So we're going to kind of work across the body this time. So bring your right knee into your chest and place the block on the right thigh. And then you're going to use your left elbow to pin the block in place. So it's left arm, right leg. Right arm and left leg come up, and then they slowly lower and extend. So crossing the body. Again, you keep the head down, or you can lift the head and shoulders up. Find what works best for you. I know for me, I'm definitely starting to feel some things <laughs> come online. <laughs> Let's go two more here. And then release, and let's switch sides. So left knee into the chest, block on the left thigh, right elbow's gonna pin it in place, and then left hand, right leg come up, they reach towards each other, and then they slowly lower. Again, trying to keep everything else engaged and not moving. <laughs> Let's go two more here. Last one. And release. Nice job. So your other blank off to the side. Let's grab that blanket. 
we're going to slide the blanket underneath the pelvis. So hopefully we already have the accordion shape. Pick up the hips, slide that in. So you are going to need space side to side. So I'm going to scooch a little bit closer towards my camera just so my legs don't hit that wall. So wherever you are in your space, just make sure you've got space that your legs can actually fall. So once you've got the blanket under the pelvis, bring your knees into your chest. Take your arms out like a T, palms facing down, and then extend your legs so they're over the hips. So the blanket is really there to help us get a little bit more lift so we can engage that transverse abdominus just a little bit more. We're not gonna go very far the first round. Just let your legs fall maybe a third of the way down towards the floor. And just pause for a moment there. So it's just maybe a foot away from where you just started. It's not far and then bring it back up through center. And then just kind of tick tock over towards the other side. Again, just about 12 inches, not much. Your focus here is to keep the feet over the hip, so not letting them drift downwards towards the floor away from you, but staying in this same line, just kind of creating this arch from right to left. Now we're gonna add on a little bit here. So the next time the legs fall towards the right, pause for a moment. And rather than focusing on keeping your left shoulder on the floor, imagine trying to get your left side rib cage to the floor. So the legs are towards the right, but the torso is twisting towards the left. And notice how that changes things. Bring everything back up through center. Let your legs fall over to the left, heavy through your right side rib cage. So legs are towards the left, rib cage and torso are spinning towards the right. So rather than focusing on anchoring the shoulder, we're trying to anchor through the midsection. Bring it back up through center. Let's do that a couple more times. Legs to the right, torso turns towards the left. Hopefully that amplified things a lot from the first round. Take the legs to the left, torso towards the right. I know that really helps me feel my obliques a little bit more. Really turning that rib cage. Let's go two more here. Nice and slow, keeping everything in line. And release, come back through center, bend your knees. So we're gonna progressively add on, we're gonna play around with long lever. So knees into your chest, let your knees fall over towards the right. Now really try to squeeze the knees. Imagine your right knee is trying to push into your left knee, left knee in towards the right, keep that. Keep the rib cage spiraling over towards the left as you slowly straighten your right leg any amount, or sorry, not right leg, both legs towards the right any amount. Maybe the feet get closer towards the hands, maybe not. Rebend, bring back up through center. Squeeze the knees together, let the knees fall over towards the left. Turn your rib cage towards the right. Extend your legs straight any amount. They don't have to straighten completely, just any amount that feels okay for you. Bring your feet closer to the hand any amount. Rebend, come back through center. So really feel that squeeze the obliques. Let's go again, take it over to the right. Rotate the torso, straighten the legs any amount, feet up towards hands. Rebend, come back through center. Really focus on the control here and that engagement through the midsection rather than using the arms to support you. Imagine if you had no arms and you just had to use your torso. Let's do that one more time. In fact, if you want to play around, take your arms away from the floor reach them the opposite direction of the legs and notice how that changes everything. <laughs> Makes you really have to work a lot harder. <laughs> so if it got too hard, take your hands back towards the floor, no problem. <laughs> Just let the arms reach the opposite direction of the legs. Ugh, you might not get your legs straight or anywhere where they were. You might even fall over. <laughs> Bring it back through center. Okay, so. Whew. From there, we're just going to find that windshield wipe ring with the straight legs side to side, but a little bit quicker of a tempo. So take your hands back to the floor if you took them away, legs over hips, let your legs fall as far over to the right as they can without that left rib cage lifting up, come back through center, go right over to the left. So same thing, kind of, just a little bit quicker, side to side, finding that windshield wiping motion, engaging through the obliques, heavying through the sides of the ribs. Nice job, stay with it. Let's go one more over towards the left. And release, bring your knees in towards your chest and release your feet to the floor. Press through your feet to pick the 
hips up to remove the blanket. Now you're gonna take that blanket and you're gonna place it in your hands. If the blanket feels like too much, feel free. You can do one block in each hand. I just think the blanket is kind of fun. Before we do anything, push the blanket up towards the ceiling and then bring it, bring it back down. So just the shoulder. So as you push, feel the shoulders kind of pick up away from the floor, keep your head heavy and then lower it back down. When you lower back down, notice the orientation of your ribs. Now as you push through the arms, notice how your ribs kind of hug down and in and you feel your low back really ground. Let's do that one more time so you can just notice that. Let it soften and then push through the hands. Feel everything on the front body engage. Now we're slowly gonna take the arms overhead. Keep that. Your arms don't have to come to the floor, but keep that downward and in tucking of the ribs and that nice flat low back as you slowly lower the arms overhead. Keep it, keep it, keep it. And then slowly bring the arms back up. Let's do that a couple more times. So really focus on keeping the rib cage down and the low back flat. Three more, and then we're gonna hold, and then you have the option to add the legs. So now we're getting into the more progressive part of class. It's gonna get just a little bit more intense. Stay with me, there will be several options, so just stick with what works best for you. As the point of today is not to really be like <laughs> torturing our core, but really teaching the core to fire and for all of the small muscles to support the larger ones too. One more, keep the rib cage down, take the arms overhead, hold to your extent, now bring your right knee into your chest. Don't lose the ribs, bring your left knee. Keep the ribs, this might be enough. Extend your right leg long towards the floor. If possible, don't lose the ribs. Extend your left leg to meet it. Hold for five, hold for four. Keep the rib cage down. If it popped open, come back to a digression back. Three, two, and bring the arms and legs back in. You're gonna place the blanket on the bottom of the feet. Hips, feet are about hip distance apart and bring them up over the hips. So <laughs> this one's a little fun. It's gonna require that you actually keep the feet over the hips or you'll lose your blanket. Keep everything as is, arms are down by the side and we're just gonna move the legs in like a circular motion over the pelvis. Again, feet are about hip distance apart. Make sure you're breathing. Soften if the knees, if the hamstrings are really, really tight. Now, some of our inclination might be to slide the hands under the sits bones. Let's try to avoid that. Really make the core work for you. Change the direction of your circle. Whew. Feel those hip flexors, feel the core. Maybe even starting to get a little bit fatigued, a little shaky. And <laughs> release, drop your blanket. Set that um, accordion fold off towards the side. Oh, let's do a little hip flexor strength and then stretch. So for this, you're gonna need your block again. We're going to, uh, actually, I think I forgot something. Let me double check my notes. I did, I forgot one thing. Sorry, we have a roll up first. So set your block back up to the side. Start with your right knee bent, extend your left leg long. Keep that sense of what we had with the blanket with the ribs drawing down and the low back flat. Extend your arms overhead. So we're slowly gonna roll up to sit. We're gonna open up to a twist towards the right. So right knee is bent, left leg is long arms overhead, slowly start to creep your hands up towards the ceiling. See if you can keep your feet and heel grounded as you start to pick everything else up, coming up to sit. And on the next breath, open up into a twist towards the right. On the next breath, slowly bring everything back to center and then unravel back down one little vertebra at a time. Arms slowly open overhead, but keep the rib cage down. We're gonna do a couple slow and then we're gonna move a little quicker with the breath, arms reach up. Slowly peel yourself up, open up into your twist. Come back towards the front and slowly unravel. Let's do one more at that pace and then we'll pick up the speed a little bit. Arms reach up, slowly roll up. Left arm reaches forward, right arm reaches back, open up into your active twist. Really making the obliques do the twist for you and then slowly unravel. All right, so now let's try to do that one breath to one breath. So we'll, we'll inhale up and open and exhale to come down. So inhale up and open, exhale to lower it back down. Four more like that. Inhale up and twist, exhale back down. Inhale up and twist. Two more.
And on the next one, we'll go slow and we'll just start right on the other side. So bend your left knee, straighten your right leg, arms come overhead, draw the ribs down, feel your low back, kind of like your tailbone is lengthening and pointing down and under you. And then slowly roll up, come into your active twist using the obliques to do the work. Slowly come back through center and slowly unravel. Two more like that and then we'll move breath to movement. So use a full breath to come up, a full breath to open, a full breath to close off, a full breath to unravel. So four breaths, one more time. Now we'll go inhale up, exhale open for five. So one breath in, one breath to unravel. Two more. Last one. And release. Whew. Definitely starting to feel that core now. <laughs> All right, let's move into the hip flexors around the pelvic floor region. So here's where you need your block on its lowest setting. Slide it underneath the hips again. You're going to bring your right knee into your chest and then your left knee. So one leg at a time just to make sure everything feels okay. Keep your right knee into your chest, but take your hands towards the floor. Reach your left leg long towards the ceiling. Before anything, find that dorsiflexion of the feet. So it's like toes to shin bone, flat flexed feet. Slowly lower your left leg until you notice the low back starts to arch up or the pelvis lifts, which is probably going to just be about halfway down. We'll probably still be able to see the toes in our periphery if we paid attention. Once you find your in range, let your low back sag more towards the floor and just the left leg is gonna pulse up an inch, down an inch. So try not to move anything else. Don't move the hips, don't move the pelvis, don't move the low back, just the leg lifting and lowering. Now the leg might have the tendency to turn the toes out towards the left. Take a gaze down, make sure the toes are pointing straight up towards the ceiling. And we're bringing awareness to the hip flexor. So when you sit in a chair, that crease, that's what we're firing up right now. So finding your in range and then just pulsing there. Keep pulling the right knee in even closer towards the chest actively. So lots of hip flexor work here, active, active, active with mobility. Having strong pliable tissues means they can be strong but mobile. And that's what keeps us more pain free is when we bring this awareness and we help the body to be strong but mobile, pliable. On the next one, let the left leg drop, hug the right knee in towards the chest. Nice stretch for the hip flexors. The feet can soften if the dorsiflexion was a lot. Just take a moment, take a couple of breaths, stretch that out. All right, let's switch that out. So bring your left knee into the chest, extend your right leg long, flex those feet. Slowly, slowly, slowly lower your right legs. Before that moment, the pelvis has to tilt or the low back starts to lift. That's where we want to stop. And then we want to go down an inch, up an inch. Now you may have one side that's a little stronger, so it might take a few more reps to start to notice one side versus the other. But we really want to feel that soft tissue there in front of the hip, really starting to fire up with this long, straight right leg, toes turned up towards the sky and that active compression through the left side as your hip is doing the work to pull the left knee in towards the chest rather than your arms doing the work. Take a couple more pulses here and then we'll come into the stretch. Three, two, let your right leg fall towards the floor, hug your left knee in deeper. Nice deep stretch for the front of that right hip. Nice deep breaths here. You can soften through the feet. It might be nice to circle through the left ankle, just a little extra. Nothing to do with today's class and purpose, but <laughs> can be nice. 
Ah, and then slowly release. We're going to flip over onto our belly. So place one foot on the floor at a time. Pick up your hips. Slide the block out from underneath of you. Lower it down. Now you can just flip over and roll onto your belly. Um, I'm going to actually just turn around because I prefer to face that way. So if you want, just kind of sit up and then flip over. <laughs> But we're going to come all the way prone, so all the way onto the belly with the arms reaching overhead. So before we even begin, reach your arms long overhead, turn the thumbs up towards the ceiling, press through the pinky edges, press, th press through the pelvis, press through the thighs, press through the top of the feet. Feel the backside of the body start to come online just by doing that action. Now we're going to kind of transition here between a superhuman and um, a very active bow pose. We are not going <laughs> to be grabbing the feet in bow. We're gonna be using the back body muscles to mimic it. <laughs> so we'll move really slowly to begin. So press through the pelvis, slowly lift head, legs, and arms. Take your arms, bending the elbows, hands towards the chest. Try to lift your chest a little bit more. Take your gaze just a couple feet in front of you. Squeeze through the glutes, lift your legs a little bit more. Let the arms reach down back towards the hips. Rotate the hands so thumbs are towards the sky, pinkies are towards the floor. Don't touch your ankles, but bend your knees, heels like you're trying to grab them. So really active bow pose here. We're not grabbing, we're not assisting, we're making the muscles do the work for us. Slowly unravel, reach the arms overhead, superhuman. So we're just gonna flow between those two poses. So superhuman, reach the arms back, bend the knees, bow pose. Three more just like that. Reach the arms overhead, gaze forward, reach back, bend the knees, active bow pose. Two more just like that. Feel the glutes, the hamstrings, everything on that back body coming online. We have one more here. Now this next one, hold for five. Can you lift your thighs a little bit more off the floor for three? Lift them up a little bit more for two. For one, lower the legs, bring your hands under your chest, lift up, Cobra. Ah, nice job. <laughs> we have one more, a little bit of prone work here. We're gonna go Sphinx to forearm plank. So bring your elbows underneath your shoulders, hands to like prayer position, or you can interlace hands if like making a fist makes more sense. Tuck the toes under. We're gonna let the core do all the work. So let the belly button draw towards the spine. Feel how that already takes your belly away from the floor. Keep doing that. So it's like your belly button's trying to touch the ceiling behind you. Keep the belly button drawing up as you pick up the rest of the body. So now you're in forearm plank. We're gonna lower to a hover. So don't set the body weight down. Once you feel your thighs barely touch the floor, lift right back up for 10. Let the belly do all the work. Tap to a hover. Don't set the weight down, nine. To a hover, eight. To a hover, seven. I don't know about you, but I'm <laughs> shaking. <laughs> we are in the harder progressive part of the class, six. Don't set the weight down, you've got this. Stay with me, five. Keep drawing the belly button like you're trying to push it out your backside. Four. Three. Two, we have one more here. And lower down Sphinx pose. Whew. Nice job. All right, we have one more before we get into our stretches. And I feel like in a yoga conditioning class for core, you had to know it was coming. Boat pose. <laughs> we have to do at least one. So we've got lots of options here. Go ahead, flip it over. Have a seat on your sit bones. Grab behind the knees. Lean back to the back side of your sit bones so you can find balance. Float the legs. So lots of options here. You can stay here. You can reach your arms long. Or if you want to join me, take your pointer and middle finger, grab your big toe. Try to straighten out the legs. Lengthen up. So here's where we're going to play with a little bit of balance. Try to sit more towards the fronts of your sit bones. So that will literally force the weight forward. You might lose it. If you lose it, just get back into it. But rather than starting to sit on the back side, see if you can sit more on the front side of the sit bones. <laughs> So really lengthen out of that low back and then try to take the legs wide. Keep lengthening, keep lengthening. Can you sit more towards the front of the sit bones? Hold for five, hold for four, for three, for two, and release. Whew. Nice job. <laughs> 
All right, so let's come into some stretches to close ourselves off with. Grab that accordion fold and your blocks. You're just gonna sit with the tips of your sit bones on the edge of that blanket there. Bring the bottom of your feet together. So Baddha Konasana, butterfly pose. And you can stay upright. You can have the hands on the floor like kickstand supporting you. I like to take my blocks to kind of frame my feet and then lower onto my forearms, but whatever works for you, your pelvis, your hips, whatever feels best for you. But we'll close ourselves off with, with a couple final stretches. I ran out of time. There were a couple other things I wanted to do, but <laughs> I think we did pretty good today. Let's take a couple more deep breaths here. <sighs> All right, and slowly work your way up. This next one, I'm going to give you several options. So you can come into double pigeon, which is shin on top of shin. You can come into Sukhasana, which is shin in front of shin, or you can come into Gomakasana, which is knees stacked, feet out. So whatever feels the most inviting, we're going to really focus on the outside of the hips with this one. I'm going double pigeon, shin on top of shin. Uh, but again, you choose three options. Find what works best for your body. Again, you can just kind of hinge forward, use your arms like kickstands. You can bring forearms onto blocks if that's helpful, hands in front of you if that's helpful. But let's take a couple of deep breaths here. Take one more deep breath. And then whichever one you picked, just switch to the other side. So alternate leg on top, in front, or stacked. And just settle right back in. And take two more breaths here. And slowly release. And this next one, we're just going to finish with kind of a little bit of a supported back bend, just because it's a really nice way to open through the chest. So take that um, accordion fold and place it kind of right in the middle of your back as you lay down. And then let your arms either cactus shape or straighten overhead. Knees can be bent. I really like constructive rest, so feet a little wider than hip distance, knees falling in towards one another. Or you can straighten the legs or find whatever feels good for the lower half. But we'll just take a couple of breaths here to finish our practice because it can be really nice to just open up the whole front body with this one. Let's take a couple of deep breaths. If you have time and you want to linger here, which I hope you can, just feel free to stay here for another minute or two. This one's really nice. But if you're on a time crunch and it's time to move on for your day, just slowly roll onto one side, work your way up to a seated position. And I hope you feel, at least in the core, alive and reawakened, targeting the way it should, but not fatigued. Hopefully that was our goal today, to not burn out the rectus abdominis, but to bring everything else online. So thank you so much for joining me for your practice today. Have an amazing rest of your day, and until next time, be well.